So, am I audible? I, I guess, I hope. Good morning from Germany, good afternoon to Bangkok and to Thailand and everyone in Southeast Asia who is listening to us. We have another, and this is our final webinar on the road to Beyond Mobile. We have this great topic of 5G and agriculture. I have some great speakers uh, accompanying me in the next one hour, one an hour, uh, 15 minutes. Um, my name is Mark Wächter. I'm the um, chief evangelist of this show we call Beyond Mobile, which is taking place in Samyon Mitan Hall in Bangkok, end of September. And as I just said, this is the um, second, uh, sorry, this is the last webinar we're doing now on this road to Beyond Mobile. Um, you are here today because you're interested in that topic. And um, we would like to brief you a little bit more about why we are doing Beyond Mobile before we jump into the topic. We have um, one premium launch partners uh, for the show in September uh, with Nokia. Uh, he, they are our platinum partner. Um, and we also have some launch partners in addition, like the British Embassy of Bangkok, Rode and Schwarz, True 5G. And we're building a huge setup uh, also towards um, SMEs and startups. Our cybersecurity partner, a knowledge partner is RV Connects from Thailand. And as I just mentioned, we are now almost done with our road to mobile. So this is our last webinar, as you can see here. And in September 28 and 29, we are in Bangkok with our show on 5G and the network economy. So uh, without further ado, we're now jumping into the topic. May I introduce you maybe our uh, program for the next hour? So we have on board today, Dr. Prisan Akbatin, sorry. He is Vice President, Digital Agriculture Development and Promotion at DIPA, which is the Digital Econom um, the Economy Promotion Agency in Thailand. We also have Claire McCarthy. She's Society Lead at CX Marketing with Nokia. Uh, we have Pushong Putawong. Um, he's Industrial Aftermarket Services at Scheffler Manufacturing in Thailand. And last but not least, we have Matas Daniel Levitches. He is CEO and co-founder of a startup for precision farming, uh, which is called Gao Rai. So I'm your host for the next hour. We now would, would like to start with individual presentations. So first on stage, uh, each have like 10 minutes, is Dr. Prisan. Dr. Prisan, this is your stage for the next 10 minutes. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. And then, uh... Let me share the point. Yeah, and, and, and maybe you can in, in, in improve your voice a little bit. The sound. Can you can you hear can you hear me? Yes, now it's better. Okay. Just for a moment. Okay, well, thank you very much. And then um, today I would like to present about the Thailand uses of 5G in agriculture for the government perspective. My name is Pris Anlapatin. I'm the executive vice president of the Digital Economy Promotion Agencies, uh, Thailand. So um, what is the data roles in Thailand is uh, we try to uh, promote and support the investment and uh, business operation uh, in relate to the digital industry and innovation. We try to support and work with the uh, other public and private organization to achieve the development of digital industry. And then we support the human resource uh, development uh, for improve the Thai and then uh, 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 in the digital industry. So we uh, have, you know, to support this to a Thai citizen. We have like uh, uh, seven or eight branch uh, scattered around the bank, uh, around the, the country in, the, in order to serve the, the Thai people uh, in all uh, different regions. Um, yes. Dr. Prisa, so, maybe you can uh, somehow increase your voice. It, it's, I don't know, it's a little bit like shaky. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, if you see the, uh, the 
how you say, ec Thailand economic structures. Uh, so we are gathering for information for around 10 years, but we differentiate into uh, three sections in uh, like a large enterprise, small and medium enterprise, and then agriculture. So if you see that uh, in the uh, lower triangular uh, agriculture, we uh, have like uh, uh, 12 million people that include 95% uh, of the, uh, 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 the workforce and uh, not, not 95%, but uh, outside of uh, uh, the, the registration's uh, workforce. So, uh, but it only contributes uh, only 10% uh, of our GDP. So, uh, one of the reasons, uh, uh, several reasons that uh, uh, we face a problem is uh, our agriculture is uh, turning aging. Uh, the average age of the farmer is 58. And also we have a lack of a workforce. Uh, people are, uh, people are work in the office more than the, they like to work in the, in the field. And then they are lack, lack of the, the technologies. Also the lack of the access of the know-how. This is why we are thinking of like how to improve their uh, their capability to improve their products. So this is, we hope that uh, 5G can contribute to some of the, uh, each sector. So we, uh, we have a start option in February, 2020. So uh, the 5, 5G network investment in already start in 2001. So we have like a, a 5G full service is uh, this year's, and then we expect to have the 5G uses about the uh, about uh, economic value value added about the uh, 1,900 million baht in 2001, and then 20 21 million baht, uh, uh, 21 mil, uh, thousand million baht in 2020. So this is the coverage of the uh, 5G. So up to now, we have a whole country 76% uh, uh, coverage. Also, we have the oper four operator that uh, uh, are installing the 5G network. And then in Bangkok, we coverage about 90, 99% of Bosu, and then in EEC, uh, Eastern Economic Corridor, which is located in the, uh, when I call it here, uh, about 90%. So that's why in DEPA, we have like a 5G ecosystem innovation center that we try to uh, support uh, digital transformation that we help the Thai startup uh, to be able to access to the 5G infrastructure and they have the testing. So uh, we have 5G regular sandbox in our buildings, and then we try to initiate uh, about 30 curriculums, uh, and then about uh, 10 uh, training a year. So we we hope that we have like uh, a thousand trainees a year. And then uh, of course it is difficult to have a we have the infrastructure, but. Uh, the problem is we don't have the application yet, so we try to support digital transformations uh, and then testing of, of the uh, like uh, agri-tech, ed-tech, uh, smart cities, health tech, something like that in, uh, in the 5G uh, ecosystem innovation center that we collaborate, collaborate with at Huawei. So in this build, in this infrastructure, we have like a, a exhibition zone and then the uh, shoe rooms, 5G shoe room for our testing. So we show that how 5Gs can uh, apply to different sectors like the smart agriculture, home entertainment, and smart cities, smart education, medical service, and manufacturing. So up to now, we try to support and develop the project uh, which is separate, uh, differentiate uh, into the smart manufacturing, smart uh, medic 
medical education, smart cities. Uh, but you see that very small ap ap uh, application to the agriculture. So, uh, but however, we collaborate with the Thai and then Korean uh, company to have them test the, how to say, uh, 5G uh, 5G sandbox. For example, we have a Kubota collaborate with the Kubota to have the agriculture vehicle driver training simulator. So we try to simulate uh, how to use the how to say the the simulator for 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 five G cloud. And then we also have like unmanned agriculture vehicle control from the control room. And then we have like uh, together with GenServe and then Kubota uh, that we we have the five G network and then the actually. Uh, the drive uh, in the uh, Kubota, Kubota smart farm in Chumburi province that uh, they have a real Kubota uh, tractor in, in the place and then we control it from the, from the control room. Also, we collaborate with the Powell to have like a, a monitoring, uh, farm monitoring systems that can monitor use, using the sensor, different type sensor in the, how do you say, hands, uh, hands factory, or we criticize using the, the drone that have like a full autonomous uh, flight, and then we have a pre five route uh, uh, designate to each field. And then we have like a, a weather station that we, we have a smart pole that uh, can measure like uh, PM 2.5 temperature, uh, moisture, and then 5G camera uh, that can monitor in the crop. Uh, we also collaborate with Varuna that uh, can operate the drone uh, using the 5G to monitoring the crop situation, crop yield, and then the, they have like a feedback or they can measure the, how do you say, using the NDVI and then the, uh, uh, to measure the health of the crop. So this is what we try to initiate, the application of the uh, agriculture sector using the 5G. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Prisan. Uh, appreciate the, the insights in, into your EIC and also, the, the big push of the government in Thailand towards 5G in agriculture, which is awesome. We can talk about this later on. Um, now, next on stage, and maybe, Marty, you can swap and go. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. So next on stage is Claire, Claire McCarthy. She is with our platinum sponsor, Nokia, and she looks after everything which is related to society in the CX marketing environment. So, Claire, 10 minutes for you, and then we see us again in the panel discussion. Okay, thank you very much, uh, very much Mark. Uh, good afternoon, good morning to all of you. Um, so, I'd like to start um, my presentation. Um, are you able to share that, Marty? Excellent. So um, I'm going to start my presentation with a little context. Um, if uh, the tech companies are often accused of producing technology solutions for problems that don't really exist, but in the case of agritech, that's not so. There are several problems that we in societies and economies need to solve in the short term, short to medium term, and the technology exists today that can help to address them. Next slide, please. So what am I talking about specifically? Well, first of all, Earth's population is set to increase from the 7.8 billion population today to 10 billion by 2050. Now, based on current production levels, this would need a 56% increase in agricultural production. 
50% of arable land is already under cultivation. And frankly, we can't continue to clear land for farms because clearing land and forests for grazing and monoculture crops is incredibly damaging for the local environment and communities. And it increases CO2 emissions and disrupts the ecolo ecological balance of the planet. And I think, you know, the sustainable aspect of agriculture is extremely important to, to keep in mind for the future. And the point here is, you know, that actually we're already producing more than enough food for the population and potentially for some of the proje projected population too. Next slide, please. Now, did you know that, for example, in the current population level of um, at 7.8 billion, around 800 million people do not get enough food to eat. Now, that doesn't mean we need to expand areas where we grow the food to feed them. As I say, we grow enough, it's just not consumed. Um, the US Food and Drug Administration estimates that in the US alone, up to 40%, 40, 40% 40, of the food supply each year is wasted or thrown away. And an agency called the World Count estimates that these 800 million people could be fed by less, less than a quarter of the food lost or wasted in the US and Europe. Now, this is both shocking and wrong. Um, and unfortunately, it's not the only problem that agribusiness and agritech is going to need to solve, because also, according to other reports, um, notably from the Intergovernmental Panel, Panel on Climate Change, Agriculture, forestry and land use account for almost a quarter, so 23% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And if governments are to keep their climate action commitments and reduce emissions, uh, we need to see a change in agriculture, uh, not least from a very practical perspective, um, because the sector could uh, see regulation and fines coming in. Um, if they can't demonstrate that they're actively plotting a path to net zero emissions. And so there are definitely things that agritech uh, agri can do to help um, agriculture become more sustainable. So next slide, please. I'll show you some of these uh, areas that um, we can focus on. So the, the three uh, challenges, if you like, or, or focus areas, main ones, they're not the only ones. First, is quite obvious, we need to do better with what we've got. Uh, we need to take the land that's already under cultivation and increase the yield per hectare. However, remember that sustainability piece, we can't do that by simply dumping a load of fertilizers and chemicals uh, all over the place because that harms the insect life, the bees, um, which are very important and of course, humans as well, because fertilizers and chemicals can seep into the groundwater, run off into rivers and water courses that are used by humans and animals. We also need to use the water supply responsibly because we've seen that despite the flooding brought by climate change in many areas of the world, Australia is suffering right now, um, fresh water is actually in short supply. The second major challenge I think is decreasing that waste in supply chains. I gave you those shocking statistics of waste in the previous slide. Crops should not be left to rot in fields or at ports or spoil during lengthy journeys to their destinations. Um, and those lengthy journeys also increase the carbon footprint of the crop. So producing crops closer to where they're consumed could be another way of reducing the carbon emissions. And this, look, so sort of feeds into the third point, which is to look at changing the farming practices uh, in order to reduce carbon emissions. So there are the challenges. We've got the situation. We know where the pinch points are. What are the solutions? So next slide, please. In terms of increasing yield on a farm, there are a range of monitoring and management solutions that are available with advanced connectivity, four or 5G based IoT and private networks. The range of solutions, weather monitoring in fields can feed into systems so that they can protect, uh, preemptive uh, action can be taken to protect crops from harsh weather um, and ensure, for example, that irrigation systems don't activate after significant rainfall. Probes in the soil can test and monitor water and pH levels at various points to ensure that crops are not saturated or depleted of necessary nutrients and water. 
drones, as Dr. Um, Rakawatin was saying before, can help to monitor uh, the condition of crops and livestock, which means that farmers don't need to get into their trucks and drive out to fields. Another saving on CO2 and, and uh, fuel there. Um, and the drones can be used in the front line of pest monitoring. Predictive maintenance of equipment also um, can ensure that machinery is in its peak condition, that it's not using unnecessary fuel and that it's ready to be deployed when there are optimum harvest conditions. Now, according to our Bell Labs Consulting, if only 25% of all farms adopted such precision farming techniques by 2030, it could lead to a yield increase of up to 30, 300, sorry, 300 million tonnes per year without further stressing planetary brandies and habitats. So we need to look at how um, we we've, we've, um, need to look at how we can make sure that once we've we've protected all of the, the crops, once they're harvested, we need to make sure that um, the maximum amount can get to its destination. So let's look at solutions for the second challenge. Next slide, please. Here, we really need to target the uh, supply chain. So we've just seen, you know, can take great care cultivating crops, um, but waste damage and loss can occur during harvesting, processing and transportation. However, if the produce is monitored throughout this process, then action be can be taken to improve those flows and send alerts before produce spoils. It's also important to remember that this process, although I've got at the top there, is, looks linear. It isn't a linear process. There are very many stakeholders involved in that farm to fork journey. Um, so you need to ensure that, for example, local and long distance transport are properly integrated. Um, you can make sure that the correct payments, so the um, the uh, automated settlements, for example, are done in a timely manner. So you make sure that there's, the payments are being made so that the produce can to move to the next phase. So there are solutions like inventory traceability, automated settlement, warehouse management, that can really help to ensure that produce is not left sitting on a key side or in warehouses before they begin their journeys. And then once they're on their way, moisture, temperature and oxygen levels or environmental controls can be monitored in the containers and recalibrated remotely or locally. Next slide, please. So the third challenge that I mentioned was reducing carbon emissions. So I've mentioned how um, some of the precision farming techniques of Agritech um, and advanced connectivity can make farming and agribusiness more productive and more sustainable by protecting the environment, reducing unnecessary journeys and energy consumption, and consequently reducing carbon emissions. But there's still more that can be done. For example, those drones, they could be used for dropping wasp larvae and they could be used for pest control on fruit crops and that's a far more natural alternative than spraying whole fields or orchards with pesticides. Similarly the wing solution um, that you saw in some of the previous slides um, and they can uh, provide remote mo monitoring and control of environmental conditions to make sure that the produce isn't uh, spoiling. Um, and there is um, an example for it. Um, there is a thought that, you know, um, if you can actually predict whether this produce will spoil en route, action could be taken to divert it en route, for example. So if it's going to spoil in the journey and then be transported halfway around the world only to get there and be dumped in landfill, that is a pretty pointless exercise. It's expensive. It uses a lot of fuel. It generates a lot of carbon emissions. Wouldn't it be great if we could monitor and see, OK, this stuff's not going to make it to its intended destination before it all goes off. Can we reroute it along the way to social welfare schemes or food banks? Could we have Agritech and governments working to help address one of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, Goal 17, um, 17 Development Goals, which is zero hunger? Wouldn't that be great? Um, and another option is to use the advanced connectivity and digital services um, to grow specialist produce, for example, closer to where it's consumed. And there's such a thing as vertical farms. 
in urban areas. Um, there's one company that Nokia works with called Aero Farms, and they produce microgreens in New Jersey in a big sort of industrial park. Um, and they use environmental controls, drones, automation, AI, AI and robotics in these big sort of warehouses to monitor the crops. And they're very delicate and they have a very short lifespan. Um, so it makes sense to grow them here and then take them into New York City to the restaurants and hotels because it reduces the air miles for the food and it's far more sustainable. And I think that last point about reducing the air miles, um, people need to be made aware of this, you know, how far their food is traveling. Um, and that's one part of a, a much bigger exercise of, of changing consumer behavior, especially in the developed world. Demand for meat and dairy um, fuels many of the most destructive farming practices. So encouraging more plant-based diets can help the planet um, in the long run. So, We've given this context, we've I outlined some of the problems, some of the challenges and the solutions, and you're probably thinking, fabulous, does any of this work, Claire? Well, I'm pleased to say that yes, it does. Uh, we have a nice example where Nokia and Vodafone Idea have been working together in India. Next slide, please. So this is a corporate social responsibility initiative by Vodafone India Foundation um, and uh, working with Nokia. We've, they've used a smart agriculture as a service solution um, based on Nokia's wing technology, which gathers and analyzes data from 400 sensors deployed across 100,000 acres of farm and in two states in India. So there are soil probes, weather stations, insect traps, uh, crop cameras, they're all providing um, data that helps uh, improve the soy and cotton crop yields, as well as reducing the environmental impact. Uh, and this initiative is helping around 50,000 farmers uh, to improve their livelihood, as well as the farming technique. Solutions provide local language support. Uh, clearly, you know, just providing everything in English isn't going to cut it. So local language support on irrigation, pesticide con control, uh, information on crops and weather as well as a platform for commodity exchange. So giving them the means to actually sell their crops on. Um, and Nokia is working with an NGO consultant, um, Solidaridad, uh, to also train agricultural consultants because it's all very well putting the tech in place, but people need to know how to, to benefit from it. And this is um, helping farmers and entrepreneurs uh, to really sort of um, use these insights to, to make a sort of smarter agricultural business. And in terms of benefits, farmers have seen around about a 7% increase on average in yield and an 8% decrease in seed and fertilizer use and an average 6% reduction in fuel costs. So a very nice equation there that you can see it's helping reduce costs and um, in produ uh, produce a, a bigger upside in productivity. And examples like this are very satisfying to us because Nokia is especially committed to technology that builds a better world. Next slide, please. And our CEO, Pekka Lundmark, he's very fond of saying there's no green without digital. He says it whenever he speaks to journalists or at conference. And he firmly believes that he's a big sustainability advocate. And our technology can play an important role in companies' digital transformations and in making other industries smarter and lower carbon. Agriculture is no exception. As a company, we're committed to a sustainable future and we're, we're reducing our own emissions and those in our value chain. We're using renewable energy sources and minimizing the amount of waste that goes into landfill and we're reusing our, and refurbing our products and materials. At, at Nokia, we really create the technology that helps the world, the world to act together and it's important that we act to ensure a sustainable future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Claire. I just in that second wanted to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> and it was good, it was good. Uh, it was a little bit more than 10 minutes, but I think you had a very strong message. And uh, I really like this, this smart agriculture example in India. We will have a chance to discuss this uh, later in the panel. Thank you very much, Claire. Thank you. So next on stage, we will have now a German company represented by Thai 
push on put along his industrial aftermarket services at Schaeffler in um, Schaeffler Manufacturing in Thailand. And he will now bring us a little bit more into the sensor world of 5G. So push on your 10 minutes. Yes, thank you. Um, on my part, I would like to introduce a little bit more for Schaeffler. Actually, Schaeffler, we are the industrial company. We provide, actually, our main business is the bearing and automotive part. So we are, we can consider that um, we are the user of the 5G and we combine the 5G technology with our technology to provide industrial. One of the thing in agriculture, um, we would like to merge our technology with the 5G and provide to the, the agriculture. Um, now, should we, should I share my screen or? Yes, yes. Ideally you share your own charts, then it's easier. Correct. Okay. What we would like to discuss now is about the Schaeffler sensor, how to help and to monitor the machine and how to help in the industrial agriculture. Um, the important part for the industrial and for the industrial, I think, is the maintenance. When you do the industrial agriculture, um, when the company have to have uh, monitor and maintain the machine, how to maintain the production, how to maintain the, the capacity of the plant is very important. So our system is very compatible to the system. The sensor is mainly to monitor the bearing for the car from the agriculture, for the motor, for the pump. The most important in the last part that we developed the new technology is the sensor with wireless. When we call wireless, it means that it can monitor and can be installed anywhere in the uh, in this part or in the farm or in the rural area. This is the thing. When we monitor the sensor of the vibration on the left hand side this is the op time that we developed the wireless the the modest um sensor that we developed to the to the industry okay um this is the platform we no need for the wiring system only the sensor in the triangle side, you put to the car, you put to the machine, you put to the motor, you put to the pump, or you put the fan in the aggregator. After that, the sensor will communicate with the gateway. The, the inside the gateway is a 5G SIM card that can transfer the data to the cloud system. From this cloud system, the user and the farmer can see all condition of the machine, temperature, vibration, the condition of the bearing, and condition of the motor. So they can know the performance of the farm and the condition of the machine, and they know how to maintain the machine and how to schedule to fix the machine. This is the sensor. The system will, um, from the sensor itself, is a Y-mesh technology. Afterward, the wire mesh technology is transferred the data to the gateway, sent to the 5G, sent to the cloud system. And on this, the computer system just connect to the, um, we call dashboard. And this dashboard can be on the laptop computer and can be on the mobile phone and can be connect to the um, iPad or iPhone. Yeah. This is the system that we, developing the sensor and the gateway and the platform, the AI for the dashboard to monitor the performance of the, of the um, remote machine. And this is the system. The customer can consider that they will monitor the machine by themselves or they can connect to the Schaeffler team to help to see the data and 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 we can help the customer to 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 notification for the alarm if something wrong in the plan for the for the fan for the blower yeah. this is for example of the data or the machine you can see the state that if the sensor uh, have low battery is we will recognize and make alarm for the low battery and if 
any sensor is um, out of the scope of connection, you can also get alarm that some sensor is is not connect to the system. You can reboot the sensor and you can ask the gateway to recheck what what the happen for the connection of the system. On the right hand side from the data, we call the condition monitor of the machine. You can see the temperature of the pump of the motor or the area that you would like to 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 secure the temperature or you want to monitor the, the temperature. And on the top is like the performance of the machine. And the second one is like the criteria of the bearing in case of um, the machine need need maintenance is will tell that the condition of the of the machine is will be in in very bad condition and the trend of the severity is will inform you in green, yellow and red through the mobile notification. And this is again, this is the example of the data that show on your mobile phone. How many pump get the red alarm? The red alarm is mean really severe. If the machine have only pre alarm, it will be in yellow alarm. And again, this is from the mobile. It's easy to connect through the 5G technology. Okay. From this point, um, I think it's on my part is very um, on the application side is very easy to understand that the sensor can be applicable for farming system, for the brower, for the motor that you would like to monitor in remote area in the farm in the um, in the far area. On the first presentation, I really pleased that now the 5G in Thailand is like cover about 75% of area in Thailand. So if you would like to know the condition of the of the performance of the machine, of the farm, and monitor all the things, you can connect this 5G and, and you can see the data and monitor and can you utilize this to, to optimize your performance of the of the industrial or on your farming capa capability. I think this is from my part. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Bouchon. Uh, right on time and excellent example of how to monitor uh, farming machines with, with the help of a 5G sensor. Again, we will discuss more in depth uh, in the panel discussion. So last but not least, uh, Matas, you are your, your stage now. Matas is the uh, CEO and co-founder of Gawai, which is a drone precision farming company, something like that. You will, he will explain us better. Okay, yes, yeah, so thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for having me. I feel uh, quite humbled and honored to be here today. I've heard a lot of interesting research and opportunities. Uh, so I will try to follow up and uh, present what we do and what opportunities we see. Um, I would like to start presenting my presentation and uh, I hope you can see my screen. So firstly, I would like to start from myself. So um, I sometimes I feel intimidated to be presenting uh, for the audiences and amongst the speakers who have uh, uh, lifelong careers in agriculture and the sector, because I'm still quite fresh. I started to work in this industry around three, four years ago. My uh, main experience and knowledge comes from uh, two different backgrounds. I'm an entrepreneur uh, and I work uh, in startup studio where we build startup solutions for uh, different type of industries. And I'm also having a, an artistic background. So um, long story short, uh, a few years ago, three, three and a half years ago, one of our business partner came with an idea because he was the agricultural drone distributor and uh, expressed uh, an issue that they're selling drones uh, but uh, drone pilots don't have uh, work. And on the other hand, farmers are calling them uh, and uh, asking them to spray the fields. So there was the opportunity for us to do some market research and see what could be done in order to empower farmers to reach the technology. So while doing that research, I, I'll repeat myself uh, from some other presentations of today, we discovered a few very frightening things that was hap uh, currently happening uh, globally. So uh, as stated before, uh, our population is soon gonna uh, be 8 billion people. 
but by 2050 we might expect up to 10 billion people so how could we uh, potentially feed this amount of people when we all also face some other issues like uh, for example rapid urbanization so it means that people who are currently doing farming uh, or families who are doing farming uh, they find more opportunities and better living uh, in the cities and in this way uh, there's not enough uh, workforce in, 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 in farming sector. Um, and uh, we face the problem because a farming sector or, or agriculture sector needs to produce at least 70% more uh, efficiency uh, in the next 30 years. So these problems, uh, you know, uh, forced me into trying to find a way to sort it out. And this is where I, I start to look for uh, potential solutions. And then COVID strike. And with COVID, we have a massive uh, uh, distortion in food supply chain. So what we see right now, we have war in Ukraine. Uh, we have uh, uh, around 800 million people starving with potentially 500 million people more facing acute hunger. Uh, we have increased price of food. Uh, countries and markets are banning exports, uh, Russia, India, Kazakhstan, Argentina. So. Uh, that creates a lot of a lot of trouble in the supply chain. How about Thailand? So, well, I'm based on I'm, I, I'm living in Thailand, and what we can see is that, uh, as as presented before, there is a lot of new technology, you know, available in in uh, everywhere from uh, satellites to drones to robotics uh, and and sensors. However, only six percent of farmers are actually using that technology. So uh, how do we bridge that gap? And the issue is here is that technology is actually quite expensive. And the farmer's profile in Southeast Asia is most likely a small holder. It means that the average price in Thailand is around three, four acres. So if the farmer has that size of land plot, how can possibly he afford a new technology? There's another opportunity in Thailand. There is around 8 million hectares of uh, land which could be cultivated and is being untouched. You know? So uh, Thailand has an opportunity to produce even more, but it's being stopped by low efficiency and productivity. Uh, so as uh, it was mentioned before, around one third of country's labor force works in uh, agriculture, but that only adds up to five to 10% to GDP. Uh, sorry, having an issue with changing my slide. Okay. Um, so doing that research, you know, we find a lot of issues and a lot of global problems, but we also saw uh, the upcoming opportunities. So um, what about new generation of farmers, the young people who are growing uh, and could become um, our future uh, food suppliers, uh, drones and robotics, IoT and sensors, um, data-driven precision uh, and uh, analytics, and connectivity and 5G. So this is where I would like to, uh, you know, present a little bit of what we do. Uh, so uh, and the decision to build Go Rice. So our goal is to empower precision farming in Southeast Asia. And I think the biggest challenge is that uh, there is abundance of uh, technology. There are a lot of new solutions, uh, but local farmers are very superstitious and very old school in their behavior. How do we bridge that gap? And how do we make it happen? So we find a few several uh, several solutions to, in order to, uh, to work it out. And we are trying to introduce one technology at a time. So we found that uh, spraying uh, pesticide and herbicides is one of the most often uh, frequent services required by local farmers. And uh, we just wanted to make it as easy as possible for them to share uh, drone services and in that way it becomes affordable and uh, easily to access uh, for a, a smallholder farmers. So um, we wanted to build a system that would be uh, as easy as possible to use. So it's very straightforward. Farmer can log in and build their profile uh, and they can uh, go posting jobs right away. So they can select their land plot we attach each individual land plot to each individual farmer and we start track the history of their services so they can select the crop uh, what type of product they want to use date and time and, and 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 promote the job on the other hand we have pilots who we carefully screen and select and train who are accepting those, jo those jobs and uh, uh, 
provide as data reports. So we rely on uh, professionally trained pilots to execute the spraying job, but we also understand uh, what type of chemicals farmers are using, what is the ratio that they dilute those chemicals, how many liters of chemicals has been used per rye, uh, how much water do they use. So in order for us to you know, uh, stop using uh, abundance of, of chemicals, we firstly need to understand how is it being used right now and what type of products perform best. So this is the data that we are currently uh, gather and uh, we're able to start seeing the patterns of what type of brands uh, and ratios and what type of drone is the best to execute uh, certain operations. You know, what type of chemical is needed for certain issue, the farmers that have. And while analyzing that, we can start predict and inform farmers the best time uh, of uh, the day and the, the best product to use for the issues that they have. So, um, you know, I, as a startup founder, uh, I'm a dreamer, you know, because uh, no one in the right sense in their head are, <laughs> would do this. Um, you know, I, I tried to see uh, what is available and I believe that, you know, the uh, future of farming could be uh, full of automation. Uh, 5G connectivity would help us to empower and track uh, live performance of, of robots, of drones, of, uh, of machinery executing jobs. And we can uh, really create a data-driven uh, precision operation where every one of us could become a far farmer. Um, I believe that uh, future of farming uh, should be uh, in the future, everyone should be a farmer. You know, we should not uh, think a farmer as a separate group. Um, I, I tried to find a solution that I could be a farmer. So I believe that uh, by including this technology, uh, by building systems and uh, educating a new generation of farmers, we could actually be playing farming rather than working farming. And this is what uh, we're trying to build. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to see that there, are, uh, uh, there is a lot of support from uh, local government agencies and corporates who are building these solutions. And I hope like, you know, together this whole ecosystem will be able to create uh, uh, in the future, something like this. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, that is uh, my presentation. <laughs> Excellent. And believe it or not, uh, I don't know where this screen screenshot is from, but it reminds me to good old heyday uh, uh, times. So that game, at least many Europeans played. My wife still plays it since 10 years, 10 years. So probably she is a smart farmer already. I don't know. Let's see. Let's let's dive into that. <laughs> that that's exactly what we were uh, thinking about, you know, from Tamagotchi to Farmville to, to, to these games. What is, used to be just virtual, I think yeah. with, with a development of technology and education, we will be able to do that uh, uh, and and kind of have virtual farms that replicates the real farm, you know. Yeah, yeah, excellent, excellent. Okay, cool. Thank you very much, uh, much matter. So we now jumping into our panel discussion. Um, of course, everyone is invited, and we already have uh, some nice questions from the audience. So uh, uh, please, audience, if you have questions, put it put them into the F uh, F, uh, F and A or Q and A or whatever. Uh, I see those questions. I certainly we'll pick them up in our conversation now so let's jump into it maybe the first question is already a good one for dr prisan um, so how will farmers understand and learn the usage uh, the use of technology across the country if they don't have budget as i understood it prisan your eic is for free right so if i'm a farmer and i can afford to go to Bangkok to your EIC, I can be trained on smart farming. Is that correct? Is for, it is a sandbox for 5G. So mm -hmm. it, is, it is for, um, how do you say, the uh, digital developer to would like to have an access to, to a 5G test base. Uh, it is not for the normal farmer, but it is okay. for a developer. However, okay. In order, in order to have an access uh, on the how, how do you learn about the how to do a smart farm in Thailand we have like uh, in the department uh, the DOA department of uh, agriculture extension they have like a group called uh, young smart farmer and smart farmer 
where they do an online training that uh, farmers can be able to access on the online course. And uh, we also, uh, in DEPA, we, have, we support the uh, ed, uh, ed tech who have like online course for students who, who are interested in each field uh, would have time or any time to uh, study the agriculture or IoT or any uh, up to their interest. So um, the farmer, uh, we, we think that they don't have time uh, during the daytime, but however, in the nighttime or when they have free times and they, uh, they can be able to access. Even now we have like a TikTok, we have there have a short, short course or short, short knowledge that you can use or you they can have a short trick uh, to teach and then they can be able to learn in a short. For example, we have like uh, how to say uh, we collaborate with the crafts and then uh, crafts crafts is like a uh, online uh, delivery platform that they would like to educate the delivery. Uh, the, uh, uh, the driver, uh, so the driver don't have time, but we uh, we have a little bit of time. So uh, it is depends on the the deliver uh, the the educator that uh, which media or which uh, uh, source of uh, media that they can give the education to 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 the Thai farmers. Okay, so there are a bunch of opportunities I learned. Um, how do farmers on the field let's say in rural thailand how do they get aware of this you know one thing is that you have this great deeper and the your initiatives but how do you make those farmers aware of this those local ones who probably don't use technology yet and who are not often in bangkok or whatever so do you have a communication plan also going towards farmers of course like like a, a department of uh... Uh, agriculture extension they have like a uh, officer scattered uh, of sub district for this one is uh, the the center that they can give the the know-how and knowledge to to the farmers mm -hmm. and then the, they have another support uh the the how do you say the uh how do you say uh one tampon one one network or something like that they have the uh, uh, where they provide the wireless uh, Wi-Fi, where the farmer can be able to freely access, and then they can learn from their their mobile or their uh, mobile device that uh, they have like a center to 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 teach or they have an online course, something like that. Okay. Okay. So, Matas, you said only six percent uh, of farmers currently use technology at all, right? Uh, maybe you raised your hand already, so maybe you want to jump in yes correct so i think i would like to add up to to the um, previous question as well that i think um well because this is part of what we try to do you know we try to make that technology affordable and this is more related to sharing economy so first of all we try to gather up uh, pools of farmers who would like to try the technology and we empower someone who invests into the technology to get the job. So that, that is one of the ways how we try to do it. But I think the bigger uh, thing what we're looking at is building the ecosystem. So we try to collaborate with local corporates and government agencies and associations to demonstrate and go deep into the rural areas to showcase the technology, to let farmers touch and feel, because we saw that the best way to promote is word of mouth. So until uh, farmers don't see it, they don't believe it, or unless someone close to them recommend it. So mm -hmm. I think that sometimes the most modern solutions for doing marketing um, is not that effective, rather mm -hmm. than just going there and presenting it directly. So. Mm -hmm. We tried to partner up and gather up other startup companies and, and uh, other entrepreneurs. And I just want to encourage that uh, this is the, the only way or the fastest way for us to do it, you know, to try mm -hmm. to build it um, together. And uh, yeah, so that, that I wanted to add. Yeah, which is, which is um, maybe also going to the direction Claire showed us. Claire, um, your example uh, in India, which is, of course, a much bigger country and, and the second biggest or even first biggest population globally now. Uh, and I've been many times in India. So let's say educating farmers in Thailand is already a big job. 
educating farmers in India is certainly uh, a level up. So can you, can you um, and, and, and there's also related to this, another question from the audience, which impact will 5G have on agricultural jobs, especially unskilled work? And now we probably talk about the Indian scenario as well. Can you uh, explain a little bit more what, you, what your wing technology and what this kind of Vodafone Nokia thing did to those unskilled farmers? Yeah, so so the wing technology, it's sort of an, an IoT grid, so it can you know provide that connectivity to to connect up you know multiple sensors and, and devices. Um, so you know, and it and it gives accurate readings, and and so I guess from a sustainability perspective, that all has a you know a big tick by it. Um, the question arises, I guess, as you say, if you've got a mass of unskilled labour that you'd like to see in the sector, are you you taking away those jobs from them? Mm. Um, I don't know the answer to that one, um, but certainly the work in India, it was working with, you know, again, sort of smallholders, they're not sort of big um, agribusinesses there, but to allow them to, to get the most out of their land as well. And I think I also mentioned at the end, it, it kind of almost disappeared under all the sustainability messaging, but it connects them because they'll they'll often still have a smartphone, right? But it will mm -hmm. connect them to the market where they can sell their produce um, because, you know, you, you don't want to take everything to the market and be standing there all day or for a couple of days trying to sell it and not have a buyer and it, and it spoils. So you need to get the best out of, of everything that you produce um and i think also by the you know, way in this, in this context i liked your farm to fork journey uh, that's a nice yes, one uh, yes yes exactly so you know and there are so many moving parts in that but also i think you know again sort of a small point as i, I raced through a, a lot of content there but um you know sitting in the uk very fortunate that here I am, you know, presenting in Thailand and I'm speaking in English. Um, but, um, you know, obviously there needs to be a lot of local content and particularly in India, there are what 200 plus dialects. Um, and so they, farmers need to be able to access what's being given to them either in language forms or, you know, what we're finding in other areas where we're looking at uh, addressing the digital divide. It's not just the access that's the issue, it's overcoming other fault lines um, and also providing mentoring. So the other fault lines might be remoteness or income or they're a particular community oh, yeah. that's, that's quite closed. But it's, you know, providing that on-site training and mentoring as well and, and transferring the skills. Because, you know, even I prefer to hear from somebody how to do something rather than, you know, I just roll my eyes when somebody says, oh, it's on SharePoint, go and read it. And I think, oh, I don't want to do that. I just want somebody to tell me how to do it. Right. And so, you know, that's something I think we can't forget. It's, it's all very oh. worthy having all this, you know, tech and, and everything at the disposal. But keep that people interaction <clears> and, and deliver it in a way that people want to consume and is going to help them to improve mm. their lives. OK, so, got it. Yeah. Thank you very much. So. Um, so far, we learned. So it's it's a it's a strong it's a it's a heavy duty to educate farmers on on, on especially on this kind of unskilled level. Now let, next next go let's go one step further to a farmer who is technically skilled, uses the smartphone maybe to steer his workforce and so on, and now he has heavy machines. Um, and and then now Chefler comes in and say, hey, we can make your heavy machine even smarter. Um, uh, um, maybe Bushong, you can explain a little bit more on because you're also doing sales. Yeah, what's the actual sales pitch? So, uh, if I bought that machine, you're coming afterwards and then say, okay, I can we can optimize uh, the monitoring of your machine, or is it already when the machine is is being bought in the process that you come in? So, where, where are where is the Scheffler positioning in that uh, in that game? Yeah, we are uh, from the part of the machine. So when the architecture, I think from the 
scaling from the medium to the large size agricultural scale, maybe they need more on the reliability of the system. For example, if you feeding the animal with the pump, with the um, blower for chicken farm, something like that. If the, if the blower is broken, you cannot control the condition of the farm and it will be effect for the overall performance, something like that. This part is might be very important that you need to monitor the, the, the the condition of the machine. This is, I think my sensor of time is quite suitable for the um, middle scale of the industrial agriculture, something like that. One example that, another thing that I faced the, the real case example that um, the, the chicken farmer, they use this sensor to, to monitor, to protect all the farm. This is really tangible. So, so it must, it must not improve. be it, it must not just be a movable machine it could also be a park for whatever chicken feeding or whatever so it must yeah. not be just a tractor or whatever yes correct okay this okay got you. The, uh, that Thank you. show the performance to show the performance of the farm and secure this farm is safe for the chicken okay got you got you interesting so let's let's uh, maybe in the last some minutes uh, let's talk about this next gen farmer we are thinking of we having in our mind yeah so the, the next generation and it's 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 your turn now matters <laughs> on the next gen farmer um because you you face this this um um you know it's one thing to educate pilots um on 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 pesticide spraying and, and herbicide spraying but Next-gen farming, if you combine 5G and IoT and drones and robotics, that's a whole new gameplay. Huh? This is really revolutionizing agriculture. So, and you are a startup and you are burning for your idea. I got, I got this. Um, do you see already those next-gen farmers? So are there these 20, 25, 30 years old who are thinking agriculture completely different? Yes, I, I do. And I also just want to touch a little bit about the 5G and jobs, you know, that uh, there is a thinking that technology is, is taking over the jobs from, let's see, less skilled workforce. But um, there is still a lot of new opportunity. And with slight upskilling, you know, drone uh, spraying needs assistance. So we, let's say, the guys who are spraying with backpacks, we hire them to be drone pilot assistant who can still put their knowledge about uh, the crop, about the chemicals, but do it in safer way and uh, more efficiently. You know, so uh, uh, also that creates new job opportunities, let's say for someone who has a, smartf a smartphone to do booking for the neighbors who are unable to book themselves. So we empower, we create systems like agent models where, you know, a kid who has a smartphone, 16, 18 year old, could make extra income by booking services for someone who is and able to do that, you know? So I think there's still some silver lining with, with that. But with the new generation of farmers, I think that uh, keeping in mind that we have Asian society so that in general, in Southeast Asia, Thailand as well, we, you know, population is aging and new generation is growing in the cities. So we tried to find a way to put them back um, into the farmland either through technology or physically. And I see now that there are farmers like that. I think that also comes to the culture, cultural aspect that uh, uh, majority of SMEs and, and businesses in Thailand are run by families. So there is certain expectation for children to take over, same in farming. And especially in more established farms, you know, I see and I know personally uh, younger generation who are like, uh, 25, 30 years old, who are taking over farms which are 2,000 rye size uh, of, of different type of crops, and they're really getting uh, into that. And they face a lot of challenges. First of all, is the dynamics and the way the business is being done by their parents' generation. You know, how, many, how, how much influence does it make to have uh, connections? Uh, it's not know-how, it's know-who and how to bring in technology, how to convince your granddad or father to, you know, try these new things, but they're coming. And uh, I think if farmer tries it, uh, they, they think about profitability. And if they can save money, save costs, uh, th that's quite easy to convince, you know, from what I see. So it takes time, but I think it's doable. Mm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, very much. So maybe last round for everyone. Um, I think both Claire as well as uh, Matas 
had this figure like, okay, we have a growing population and we need kind of 70% increase in, in this kind of volume we, we need to build. So uh, Prisan, um, I think uh, on, on the technology side, it looks to me from Germany, it looks to me that Thailand is really well advanced. Yeah, So 75% coverage all over Thailand of 5G is huge. But is it really this kind of the, the milk can uh, in rural Thailand, has it has it 5G already? Or is this 75% more this kind of telco speech? Hey, we covered 75%. So what's the real experience in rural area of, of Thailand with 5G coverage? Is it there? Can I use it? Um, of course, the population is like uh, 75% for the whole country. But uh, in the rural area, it's very hard to have um, some areas have to have access. And then we have like uh, experience that um, in some area, some operator can, can uh, because we, in DEPA, we provide some fund uh, for the farmer to implement the IoT systems for the, the farm. So mm -hmm. with the IoT system, we have like a SIM card and then something like, uh, 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 something like contact to, to the mobile in order to have like a monitoring systems. Uh, when we implement some 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 of the IoT parts, so we can see that um, some areas that can use one operator, but the other operator is really hard. So there is still a burden that uh, in the rural areas have some some difficulty to have a uh, internet access, but all not not all of the all, all, all of the I would say uh, yeah. in the rural area can can have the full access. Uh, it's, 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 I think it's, I, I would assume it's everywhere the same in the world and even in so-called developed countries like Germany, um, in, uh, in the end, the operator says it, it's not profitable to go into that rural area, but 5G should have the kind of promise to go exactly into that with, with all those wavelengths we're talking about here. Yeah? Um, interesting. So maybe um, we build on this 70%. So how do we feed the global population in the next years? Any projects, um, Claire, you can you can kind of let us sneak preview in, like like what, what is Nokia having in the pipe for going towards sustainability, going towards feeding the world with, the, with technology you're supply, providing? Uh, I'm afraid I can't give you any spoilers about uh, you know projects to feed the world, but um, nice try, you know, nice to, try, huh? <laughs> nice try. Um, but um, I mean, suffice to say that you know the, the sustainability angle is is pervading a lot of our products and and services anyway. So it's not just the agricultural sector that we're thinking of. We, you know, it's the energy sector and manufacturing as as well. How we can make all of those. Uh, smarter and more efficient and more productive with, you know, with with less, with less, uh, you know, diesel and petrol and, and you know, mm. looking at recycling materials and, and minimising the waste that, that goes to landfill. So there's nothing specific that that um, uh, is coming up as a big flagship agri-tech agri oh, agri project but it's kind of baked into a lot of the things we do, that all of those kind of goals. And, and, um, and every tech so certainly is kind of a focus uh, thing where everything comes together, yeah, right? Where you have exactly. sustainability and green tech and manufacturing optimization, as we just learned from Scheffler. And mm. then you have this gaming, gamification yeah. aspect of matters, yeah, where you need to train local farmers. So it's really an interesting aspect. So we certainly will um, kind of cover this in our Beyond Mobile show. I would like to thank you guys. If, if somebody has something very urgent to say now, then raise your hand. Otherwise, I would kind of close up this panel now. So all fine. Yeah, thank you very much for being okay. with me this afternoon in, in Thailand and this kind of morning in, in the UK. And uh, I would like to quickly wrap up um, the, the presentation with some hints on the what's happening in Bangkok uh, end of September. So yes, maybe you can jump to... Oh, no, sorry, that's already the, the chart we want to see. Yeah, all good, all good. So secure lo your location. Now we still have some places there. If you are um, a smart farmer, if you have some, uh, somebody who is doing smart solutions for Agitech, uh, certainly come around and and and, and contact um, Marty, as, as explained here. Next slide, please. <clears throat> 
Yeah, these are the available packages. I think this is all online, so we can skip to the next chart, please. And um, what we also looking in is is that we uh, have a special startup arena and also um, also a startup pitch. Yeah? And uh, we can just if you're if you're as passionate as Gawai and Matas, come along and pitch your idea. It doesn't matter whether you're in agriculture or health or logistics or whatever. We're looking for the best 5G solution uh, in the context of, of this show. And um, Deepa is, is a strong supporter. They, they, they have an own startup unit and Deepa will support us in that uh, arena. Next shot, please. Yeah, and um, that's the pitch I just mentioned. So on the first day of the show um, in the afternoon from five to six, we will have on stage the best uh, 10, 12, let's see, startups uh, from the SA re region um, can pitch their idea. And maybe we saw one of those pitches today already. Huh? Okay, next chart, or oh, this probably the final chart. Yeah, so this is the um, Beyond Thursday, which is uh, an evening reception uh, in, in Bangkok on August 4th, 4th. So if you are located in Bangkok and you wanna meet and mingle with some cool 5G guys, Come along, um, Seven Peaks Software is one of our partners. They um, kind of provide the location, just scan the code to participate or just Google Beyond Thursday, you will probably find everything. Uh, it's a Bangkok based uh, networking event starting at 6 p.m. in the evening on August 4th. So this was it, I guess. So the last chart is probably summing up what we did today. Uh, thank you very much, Algot. You don't have to share anymore. Um, my name is Mark. If you like this session, you can also connect with us on LinkedIn. Please follow Beyond Mobile. Thanks to my esteemed guest this, this morning, this afternoon, saying hello to Bangkok. Uh, I will be there in September. Yeah? See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. ขอบคุณครับ